I did get him. I was so high, I thought I'd just take a look around the next bend while Sheck was writing out our slate. Right then, I didn't think there was anything to worry about. Suddenly, there was this sound, this awesome noise, all around, like the whole cave was falling in on me. sound was coming from. I thought it was Shek. Then I saw he was okay. I realized it had to be me. Shek hadn't heard the blow. I decided not to let him know, in case he'd stress out and breathe faster. So, so what had happened? The valve seat, my spare regulator blew. In layman's terms, a tank is filled with air under great pressure, which is too much for your lungs to take in. They'd burst. So there's two valves that reduce that pressure. The first one is in the neck of the tank. The second is in your mouth. Of course, you have double tanks. You have two regulators. The seal and my spare regulator disintegrated. And I lost the air in both tanks because they were manifolded together. Ken thought it must have been mine. See, when you're down that far, sound carries. And you're disoriented because of all the nitrogen in your blood. By the time I realized the problem wasn't Shex, I only had a few minutes of air left. Jack had no idea my air supply was almost depleted. And I'm thinking, hell, I'm gonna die, and he's drawn a map. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Finally, my air was almost out. And I figured he might be interested. Ken has been known to play the odd practical joke. When he held up his gauge, I thought, you're kidding, right? Ken, this isn't funny. Ken was always joking. But he wasn't joking this time. I could see it in his eyes. But you had enough air. Did you ever think of leaving him? No. You don't think like that. We were three quarters of a mile from the surface. No chance of a rescue. At least 1,500 feet from the reserve tanks. But we had two regulators. We could both breathe from my tank. As long as it lasted. To be honest, I wasn't overly concerned. I even thought about clipping the Spanish slate back on as we rejoined the blue line. I was in shock. I just held my breath and swam. You were both close to death, but you stopped to put back the Spanish slate? Hell yes. We might be dead, 
We want people to know we'd beat the Italians and the Spanish. The adrenaline's flowing. Uh, nothing exists but you and the diet. We were close to the line. Didn't take any extra effort. Except that you refused to look at the pressure gauge. I was scared, I tell you. We were both getting worried. But I started to skip every other breath to preserve air. My head felt like it would explode from the CO2 buildup in my blood. I finally dropped the spare regulator and used up the very last of my air. Couldn't let Sheck die because of me. But again, it looked like that's what would happen. Both our tanks emptied about the same time. We pushed those last yards. I don't know if my heart was pounding from holding my breath or from the relief at seeing the second stage tanks. So you just made it. You were lucky. Lucky, but not home and dry. You see, uh, skip breathing allows carbon dioxide to build up in your blood. I, for one, was close to a CO2 blackout. I could feel it. I knew I'd have to stay there for a good few minutes to flush out the CO2. While using up precious air in our stage tanks. By the time we were underway again, I knew things were looking serious. I think it was then it really sank in. We might just die in there. Every time I looked at my gauge, it seemed an ever more likely scenario. Of course, that didn't stop you from clipping on the Italian slave. Running on autopilot, believe me. My air ran out as I saw the first stage tanks. All my energy was focused on one thought. Get out. Get out. Grab that fresh tank and go. I hardly stopped to unclip it from the line and shove the regulator in my mouth before I was off. I just made it as my tank ran dry. Swam like a madman. Then it hit me. Sheck had taken the wrong one. My half-empty tank. The one I'd wedged under a rock. If he started breathing hard, he'd run short of air again. You see, a cave dive like this is like setting up a long line of dominoes. One problem knocks you off balance, your timing goes. And every step of the way, you're wrong. You knock over the first domino, and the entire line begins to collapse, one after another. My head was pounding with the CO2. Boom, boom. I couldn't believe it when my gauge read nearly empty. The extra tanks were really slowing me down. All I could do was push for the decompression point, and the tanks Dennis and Rob had left, and pray I could make it. I got there just as I ran dry again. I grabbed a tank, but Dennis and Rob hadn't fitted the regulator. I didn't have the strength to change mine over. I was blacking out. Ken just caught me in time. They'd assume that we'd have more than enough time to change over to those tanks if we needed them, which in theory, we shouldn't have. Like I said, a line of dominoes. Except the last one didn't fall. Wrong. See, we depleted the air supply again. Remember, three hours decompression. Before that, surface and the bends might kill you. But we didn't have enough air to last. Stop worrying. There'll be a few hours yet. I'll get the beers in. OK. We had to get more air or die. I got us into this mess. I had to risk the bends and get help from the surface.
By pure luck, Dennis had a spare tank handy. Otherwise, we'd have probably died in that game. Absolutely fascinating. Mm. Be off now. Can I give you a right? Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problems. <clears throat> There's still one thing you haven't explained. Why do you do this? Well, I, I guess cave diving represents most people's worst nightmares. Claustrophobia, darkness, drowning. But it does fulfill man's basic instinct to explore. I guess if uh, in another life I'd have gone to the South Pole or walked on the moon, I can't do those things, but I can do this. I'll get those chapters to you as soon as I can, Tony. Good man. Thanks again, Chick. Bye. See ya. You know, after Lanzarote, when I realized how close we came, I started thinking about my family, what I wanted to do with my life. And I realized I had to give up deep cave diving. And I think the moonwalk's out of the question. <laughs> but the thing is, I'm glad I came along. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll call you later. And remember, Say your prayers, wabbit. <laughs>